Tonight's lesson is the gift of giving and the gift of mercy. Taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 8. The objective for tonight's lesson, at the conclusion of today's lesson, each learner will be able to tell whether he or she had the gift of giving or the gift of mercy. Name someone you or she believe had the gift of giving or the gift of mercy. And because our mission is to know Jesus Christ better and to make Jesus Christ better known, that'll be an object for everything that we do here at Mount Home. The introduction. <clears throat> to this point, we have learned that there are 19 spiritual gifts. Seven of them are found in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Eight are found in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. One is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Two are found in Ephesians 4, verse 11, verse 11, I'm sorry, and one in 1 Peter 4, verses 9 through 10. We have learned that spiritual gifts make believers individually and collectively like Jesus Christ. Spiritual gift will make you as an individual <coughs> like Jesus Christ, and it will make the Mount Hall Missionary Baptist Church as a whole, the universal church, more like Jesus Christ. We'll learn that the spirit oh, the gifts are to be used for the church, for others, and not for oneself. God has not gifted anyone so that they'd have something to brag about or so that they would have a way to better themselves for this to be used for others. There are three types of spiritual gifts. And they are speaking gifts, serving gifts, and sign gifts. We have talked about the gift of help. Ministry or service would be another name for that. And the gift of leadership. Today we will take a look at the gift of giving and the gift of mercy. The gift of giving. Romans 12, verse 8, the definition. It is the God-given ability to give over and beyond the tithe, cheerfully, eagerly, and generalist, generalist to the Lord's work with no, no, with no motive but to further the gospel. Now, even if you don't have a gift of giving, you are expected to give. That's taught in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, where it says, Let every one of you, on the first day of the week, lay by and store it, the Lord has prospered. That teaching that given ought to be liberally, it ought to be proportionally, and it ought to be regular. You can't give. until you have paid your time. Giving is over and beyond the time. You owe God the time. And once you pay that, you can start, you can start giving. You, as long as you owe me, and you are giving me a little money every now and then, I had a little boy in school, 
He'd borrow a dollar from me uh, about three or four times a week. And every month, when his mama got his check, he'd give me a nickel on what he had gotten from me all the time. I'd take the nickel and the next day I'd have another dollar. I knew and, and he knew that he never would get out of my debt, but he always wanted to demonstrate that if he could, he would. An excellent model of the gift of giving is Barnabas in Acts 4, verses 34 through 37. If you read that, you'll find that Barnabas had a plot of land. He sold it. And he brought all of the money that he got from that land and laid it at the apostles' feet that it might be distributed as the need arise and that the apostles saw feet. Saw fit. The ultimate model for this gift is the life of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. Jesus was God. Jesus was in heaven. And he gave all that up to come down on earth and be a man, live among us, and redeem us. The manifestation of the gift. That's a fancy word for the display of the gift. People with the gift of giving receive joy and fulfillment from it. Now listen, everybody don't have the, the gift of giving. So you don't expect them to receive joy and fulfillment from giving. It's only if that's your spiritual gift. The Father teaches in Matthew 6, in Matthew 6, verses 1 through 4, where uh, uh, Jesus is teaching that when we give, uh, we don't want to get everybody's attention and say, hey, look what I'm getting, look what I'm getting. Now that does not mean attention is not to be paid to give it, because Jesus noted that the widow gave more than anybody other those uh, rich people were putting out large sum, and she put out two, and Jesus took notice of that, and he made mention of it in the scripture. Meanings of the gift, and that reminds me of uh, when we went through the, the book, The Mind of Christ. We talked about uh, three levels of spirituality. One, you could be pierced. That's what we ought to be. Two, we could be sinful. And three, we could be pure tactical. That means that you go, you, you, you can make something good, bad, by going over and beyond that, that you ought to do in that. You know, you uh, the guy that whipped the child the other, the other day in the football, he intended to be doing good, but from the pictures I saw, he took it too far, and that got in the area of pure time. Now, the other thing about this gift, when it comes down to giving, a person with this gift of giving becomes a menace when he or she tries to manipulate how the contribution of you. You give, but you want to dictate how, how to you. I know two situations now. How, Share with you. There's a church right around here where a lady built for the church a women's lounge. Get down to the church. All of you know where the church is. But she kept the key. <laughs> and only those who she wanted to get in the women's lounge of the church could get into the women's lounge. I know another lady that's on the other side of town that bought the church in Oregon. But she kept the key to the Oregon. And you could only play the church's organ that she had given the church if she gave you permission to play. Nobody else in the church could give you permission to play the organ that she had bought for. That's been, that, that takes it too far. 
And if you can, that, that really not, that really not give it. If you try to control it. Person with this gift must also be careful not to judge others by the amount of money they give. We really need to learn to measure gift given the way God made it. But about not when Jesus said that poor widow that gave two pence gave more than anybody. He was measuring giving giving different from what we do. He was measuring giving not by the amount that you put in, but by the amount that you kept. By the amount that you had left once you got through giving. And as you look at the gift, when you look at the printout on the sheet, you see somebody gave $10. They may have, in reality, given more than somebody that gave a thousand dollars, depending upon what they had left when they got through giving. I lived, I, I'm going to talk about a couple guys who gave ninety percent. R.G. Tours, he gave ninety percent. He tied at ninety percent. There's a guy named Stanley Tim. He organized a business. And he gave 100% of the income of that business to the Lord's cause here on earth. Then they go on to talk about folks like J.C. Penney and many others who had the gift of, uh, of giving. Now keep in mind the guy that gave 100% that was from one business. He probably had other businesses that he was living out and he just set this one up and, and, and he didn't need any more money so everything I make, I'm going to give it to the church and to advance the Lord's call here on earth. Now we want to move to the gift of, of mercy. Definition. This gift may be defined as the God-given ability to have compassion for all kinds of of hurting people and minister to them cheerfully. This gift was modeled in the story of, in uh, Luke 10, 33 through 35. A good example would be the, the story of the Good Samaritan. You, you're familiar with the story. He uh, was going down from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves. Levite, priest came by and passed by on the other side. A Samaritan, a man of a different nationality came by, and he had mercy and he had compassion on him. He took the man, put him on his beat, took him to the inn, made a rain for him to be taken care of. Gave him two pence. He said, whatever is old more than this, whatever you out of more than this, I'll be back in a couple weeks and I'll catch up with you. I'll pay you whatever else I, I owe you. God given the ability to have compassion on all kinds of hurting people and ministers to them children. The, the Good Samaritan and Luke 10, 33 through 35 modeled this. In Matthew 9, 36, he uh, tells us not to give just to be, you ought not give to be seen giving, but it's a blessing to be seen giving. I, I, something I have wanted to say about the gift of giving too. Anybody who had, who had the blessed, who had the gift of giving, have already been blessed because you got something to give. And, and if God gives you a gift, it's a call. And if he calls you to give, he's going to always make sure that you have something to give. He demonstrated that with Abraham. The manifestation of the gift of mercy is in 12... 15. This is a caring and loving person. He or she has a listening ear. 
the person has a built-in hurt detector and to zero in on hurting people. Some kind of way, people with the gift of mercy, when somebody's in need, they have a way of finding out about it before anybody else finds out about it, and then they will go to that person and start ministering until they are hurt. The ministers of the gift, the per this person may become depressed. You can see so many hurting folk, and, and you can't meet all their needs until you might become depressed. The person may become pessimistic and negative. They may become critical of those in the church who are not as compassionate as they are. The modern example of the gifts are found in Luke 10, 37, and in Galatians 6, verse 2, where we are taught to bear one another's burden. That's Galatians 6, 2. But you go down to 6, 7, 8, it, it'll say, let every man bear his own burden. And some folks have a burden that they cannot bear, and then we are to help uh, to bear those burdens. That sort of concludes the uh, discussion, and you had a copy. I let you fill that in. Anybody have any questions now?